easy. I could just, I'll just keep going back to MSN and need more money. I have buddies that have came to Hershey Park that ran business, a successful business, that came to Hershey Park to finish out their career. I remember him, I remember the, uh, sitting with him specifically talking to me like, I should be wholesaling. And I was like, nah, man, I don't like wholesaling. I like buying. And I remember you telling me, you're yeah. like, ah, I don't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I will say that I should have, you know, took his advice, but, you know, oh. it was like we were so stretched and so far thin. Um, I ended up selling 20 some units. We let, we let go everybody. Welcome back to the Investor Unite podcast, where we talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. If you are looking to ignite your real estate investing, then join us at Investors Unite. And on today's podcast, we I'm not the only ginger for once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We yeah. got a great guest. It's crazy because we go back, like from the beginning of when I got my real estate license. Yeah. You're actually the first investor I met with. But yeah, it's going to be really exciting from the title of this video. I already know what the title is. <laughs> like, we're going to talk about how he bought a house for a dollar, right? Yes. Yeah, my first so one. So we're going to dive deep into that. But we have with us Noah Starry. He's an investor. He has done fix and flips, um, wholesales, novations too? Yep. Novations, yep. Um, construction companies, so much. So we're going to dive into it. But Let's first, you know, hear your story and how you got into real estate. Yeah, so um, I'm actually an electrician by trade. Um, I graduated from high school, uh, Lebanon High School in 2010, and um, I had a full ride to Lebanon Valley College in Anvil. Mm -hmm. um, I doubled in business and accounting. I dropped out two weeks prior to uh, our finals in the first semester and oh, realized shit. that, yeah, college was not it. And um a lot of a lot of backlash on that because, like I said, I had a full full ride. Yeah, um, it was a private school, you know, mm -hmm. forty thousand dollar a year school, and I was just was like, yeah, I'm done with it. And then I ended up at Thaddy Stevens. Um, oh, I sure. got a, a certificate um, because in that time I had my son. Okay. So I had my son when I was twenty years old. So immediately had you know made me think like I gotta I gotta work. So. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't know Thaddeus Stevens is a technical college yep. down in Lancaster. Trade school. It's actually school. one of the top five on the northeast uh, oh, wow. for trade schools um nice. so yeah um so if you want to get into trades thaddy stevens is definitely if you're part in that's Central where uh, our one contractor here oh, at the yeah. school yep yeah yeah so um so I, yeah i got through there got the the nine month certificate as an electrician and immediately went into work in the construction um my dad was a drywall for 30 years so i already was familiar with the construction world yeah um but my parent my mom mainly was the one who was like i needed to go to college College is the way, you know, You're I mean? smart dude. you don't want to be, yeah, you don't want to be doing what your pops did. And, you know, cause my dad's all, he's he got plates up. and screws and all yeah. this other stuff. So did that, became an electrician and then just worked my way up in the electrical field, started off in commercial. Um, then, uh, I came back in, that was traveling, which yeah. sucks. Like totally sucks. Yeah. So came back into Lebanon. Were you with for, a were you with a company or were you just I was, freelancing? Uh okay. Meadow Valley Electric out of Ephrata. Um okay. they did commercial electric. So the first seven months of my son's life, I actually wasn't even there most of the time because I was in Maryland um on uh Fort Meade, which is um uh there we I helped wire the uh NSA warfare building. Oh, um so That's yeah, that cool. was yeah, that was cool. It was a cool experience, but man, yeah. it sucked. We get up at I had to get up at like two o'clock in the morning on no Monday way. to get to the shop by like three for us to leave by three thirty to be on the job site by seven. Um, work a ten hour a day. You know what I mean? It sucked. Yeah. Thursdays coming home, going through traffic through Baltimore and stuff like that. Get so home. Horrible. I won't get home till like ten o'clock. You know yeah, what I mean? like I just want to see my damn kid. Bro. Yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, just born. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm twenty years old. I don't know what the heck yeah. is going on. So, so that was an experience. So I, fast. I was like not. Didn't like it. I was like, you know, let me go, let me find a job locally, see if I can get with a local contractor. So then I ended up with um, Dick Allen Electric, which was just a mom and pop um, company, electrical contractor. Um, yeah. was with him for a year. And then um, I ended up at a printing company called Bemis um, because one of my good friend's aunt was in HR there. And she said that the one electrician was retiring and they're going to be looking for someone and it's easier to get that position if you're already in the company. Oh. So that was not ideal. I ended up becoming a forklift driver. You know what I mean? Um, I left the electrical field to be, do that. Certified. 
It was cool. It was a cool job. It was third shift. So that was definitely an experience that I did not like at all. So did you get to see your kid then more during the day? Yeah, or for sure. Just, you know yeah. what I mean? And um, I was, man, I, my son is everything. So like yeah. anything that I ever did was to be able to do more with him or spend time with him. Um, third shift definitely was rough with, with uh, at that time he was little. Yeah. Um, so he actually like during the day would sleep with me and stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah, because wow. he was little. Yeah. Um, he was on daddy's schedule. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then I left. I, the job um, wasn't coming fast enough. And I'm like, oh, what the hell am I doing in here? Like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm an electrician. Like, I need it. So um, I got a job at the Hotel Hershey. Mm-hmm. Um, that was cool. I met some really good people up there. And it was another experience. You know what I mean? I learned uh, HVAC and plumbing and stuff like that up there. Yeah. Um, a lot of rich people coming in and out. Oh, of there. man. There's this one guy. He would uh, – so the Milton Hershey suite is the main suite. Like if you look at the, the hotel directly on yeah. um, where the veranda is and stuff like that and you look up, that's the Milton Hershey suite right in front. It's massive. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a guy. And at this time, I think it was like peak season was like 25 to three grand a night. Um, wow. <laughs> and he would write it out at a month at time. So he ran out like for one month because um, yeah. he was doing business in the area. Damn. Really cool dude. Yeah. Um, but like stuff like that. That's you know, crazy. Lamborghinis, Porsches. Like there's just people that yeah. like, yeah. we had a lot of families from like upstate New York that would come and stuff like that. Coming stay in the cottages. Yeah, man. It was, yeah. it was, you met a lot. Like um, my buddy met Andre 3000 because he stayed at the hotel. Oh, shit. Um, Kevin Hart, Bought the Catherine suite, but never stayed because he needed to be in New York the next day. Oh. Um, so he, he came he in. <laughs> yeah, he just rented it and then ended up after like, the show, <laughs> instead of staying, staying, he just took the tour bus and went right to New York. Oh, yeah. There's New York show. So he's not worried about um, that. You know, we had Jay-Z, Beyonce there, Justin Timberlake, you know what I mean? Like all these different, you know, people over the That's years, crazy. stuff like that. I didn't so, know that. That's yeah. Crazy. Craziest thing, the first weekend I was there, <laughs> um, a lot of people have big, crazy ass weddings there. Yeah. Um, this the first weekend I'm on shift. Mm-hmm. There was a Willy Wonka wedding. No, uh, <laughs> and there was Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompa. Loompa. I swear to God, they were. You like, jump right in there, dude. I didn't. I didn't know what this. Was. I thought I was like because I saw he, he like the one dude was walking across the um where the fountains at, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Who, am I seeing this? It's a little <laughs> short guy, orange with green hair, and I'm like, what? The? So you know, he went upstairs. So I You're went like, upstairs I and I, I peek in and like. They There's got like hundreds this, of Oompa Loompas. So there's these guys dancing and stuff, and I'm just like, "What the fuck is going on?" This is this That's is hilarious. that was my first experience at the hotel. So, yeah. so crazy. got that job, and then um, that was during that job is when I I I came across the um, Dollar House. Yeah. So a good buddy of mine, Andrew Zidick, shout out to to Zidick. Um, he was a code enforcer for um, Lebanon City at the okay. time, and um, he. Every morning, so at that time, I was working third shift again, which, again, sucked. Pain. That was different. Now my son's a little older. Yeah. He'd come in and wake me up. Mm-hmm. I would never sleep. I would never sleep. He'd come in and be like, Daddy, Daddy, are you sleeping? I'd be like, yes, buddy. <laughs> and he'd, he'd be like, okay. And he'd go out. Yeah. And an hour later, he'd come back. Are you still sleeping? Yes, but I'm still sleeping. <laughs> no, uh-huh. So that was, uh, that was definitely a struggle on third shift with, uh, you know what I mean? At the time, I think he was like four, four or five. Yeah. Um, but... Um, Andrew was a painter for the hotel and those guys would come in at five o'clock in the morning because they could do a lot of their painting before guests wake up and all that other stuff. Right. Um, so I'm third shift. He's coming in on that. He's the early shift. So five o'clock, we'd always bullshit in the, um, in the shop for like, you know, I won't say how long, but you know I mean? Sometimes it's longer than other. (laughs) Um, and I was telling him the whole dreams and aspirations. Like I want to get into real estate. I've always been fascinated. I, um, at the time had my own side business as an electrician so Mm -hmm. for years i was doing work for other flippers and investors contractors you know mom Mm -hmm. and pop guys and whatnot so did you have anyone in your family that did real estate or is this kind of just your idea Uh, man uh no like now i'm trying to think like no one you know my parents own their house my grandparents own their house but no one ever really got into investing and um, i always tell my dad like he his drywall business was pretty successful until he got sick and he easily could have bought a shit ton of property. Yeah. And I always tell him, like, I'm glad of what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, he could have bought a lot. You know, yeah. his business was growing very quickly. Yeah. Um, but that's a whole other story. So <laughs> I'm talking with Andrew, and I'm telling him all this stuff. He's like, look, man, I got a file. Um, it's a shithole. <laughs> um, which was an understatement. Yeah. You know, when he said that, I'm thinking, okay, it's rough. No, it was, yeah. it was fucking shithole. It was bad. 
Um, I don't know if you you guys saw pictures of it before, right? And you told me like visual uh, like, yeah, of it. Yeah. So yeah. we'll get to that point. But he's saying, hey, like these people are elderly, like we're killing them on fines. It's been condemned for 14 years. Like maybe you can do something with it. So I was like, okay. Um, he got me in contact with the one son. So it was owned by an elderly lady. Uh, Mary Zellers was her name. I still okay. remember her name. Yeah. Um, How long ago was this? This would have been 2017. Okay. Um, 2016 going into 17. Gotcha. Um, like I said, I worked at the hotel. I've been talking to Andrew about doing this stuff. And he was like, look, man, like this could be a good opportunity for you. Yeah. Um, so I get a hold of, um, I think his name was Joe, the one son. And um, I'm talking to him and I'm like, hey, like, you know, Andrew from Code Enforcement said, you, you know, you, this place is rough and that, you know, um, you're, you can't do anything about, you know, all this other stuff. So I finally, finally went to go look at the property because yeah. he was like, well, go look at it, you know, like kind of make your judgment call on that. How'd you get a hold of the son? Did you like skip trace? No, Andrew gave me the contact information because he okay. was already in conversation with him because of the, you know, the fines, the fines were starting to pile up. Like, right. There was, a, you know, probably like $1,500 worth of fines. Okay. Um, so I went over to it. Definitely was a shithole. Holy fuck. That was yeah. like when, when, and like when, when someone tells you it's a shithole and you never really, like I've been in some rough pots yeah. places. Um, but man, I walked in that. It was like, what the fuck is <laughs> how this was place? the, uh, the location in Lebanon? Was it like decent area? It was actually it like- a good area. So it's on the nice. South. If you're, if anybody's listening, you know what I mean? Lebanon, you have South side and North side. It's so little. It's so funny. Cause like yeah. you talk about this and then you guys are like in Harrisburg and Lancaster, like Lebanon's very small. So the train tracks is what separates it. The north side is supposedly the blighted rough spot, and the south side is the nicer area. It was on the the south side. Um, It was a row home. Um, It was actually a duplex. Okay. Um, So, yeah, the back was uh, boarded up. I just tore the board off yeah. um it was like you know what i mean i don't think the guy's gonna give a shit so yeah it's been in. condemned 14 years yeah oh, like the yeah. the kitchen area there was like a uh an addition to it that basically was completely collapsed in um super gooey i don't know if that's they, nasty can, yeah like yeah. literally you stepped and it was like i was yeah. like what the fuck? why like we just did one down on uh you remember the sixth street property we did with uh isaiah and david I had to go in there and get pictures of the water. Oh, yeah, I didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, a like, fire damaged property sat for like several years, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. I walked down to that basement. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, oh. Years of water. I don't know and... what I'm stepping on. Like, and threw those shoes away. <laughs> dude, it, 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 so you got it then. That was there. Yeah. So then I walked into the house and there's, um there's, dude, there was, you guys ever heard of a banker's? It's a, it's a vodka. It's a cheap ass vodka. Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't. Oh, man. So banker's. Back in my youngin days, you know what I mean? When I was younger, that was like, it was like $12 for a whole gallon of alcohol. Oh, shit. <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. Horribly disgusting. There was thousands of these bottles in this, oh this place. And then, the, you know, the um, Sam's Club Cola, mm-hmm. those two liter bottles, there was thousands of those. So whoever was hanging out in there over the past 14 years was yeah. totally getting lit and just yeah, having, having a, a good time. Of like, <laughs> and it was like, what the fuck is going on? It was breaking yeah. the house. Um, drunk. Another weird thing was there's like, was a million fucking tampons. Remember you tell me. Yeah, that was a weird. That <laughs> yeah. was a weird thing because like, I was, the fuck's he doing? they were blue and pink. That's all I remember, and they were blue everywhere, dude. Thousands of them. So like trash is like up to my down dude. There, like, I don't tampons. know. So someone was partying. It was getting weird. I don't know, man. It was a. Uh, it was, and I'm like, what the fuck? Is, okay, so this place is bad, and I'm just thinking like, I can, I can do this. You know what I mean? I can figure it out. Mm-hmm. Can't pay anything for it though. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, this was definitely at a time where Lebanon was still the value was like still pretty like, low. The <laughs> average sale on that block was like fifty to sixty thousand. No you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was and it was in not the bad area. Yeah. So um I went back and basically told him I was like, Look, I got no cash, but I can take the headache off of your you know what I mean, you guys are getting railed on fines. You're paying the tax every year, which, by the way, were only four hundred dollars. No shit. Yeah, man. Wow. Four hundred bucks a year is That's freaking crazy. awesome. I know. Only what eight years ago? Yes. What do you yep. think they were now on that property? Probably like fourteen. Fourteen hundred. Wow. That's still not bad compared to Harrisburg. No. Yeah. Well, dude, it's only a two bedroom, one bath, little like yeah, it was like one hundred square foot house. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean, so That's reasonable. Our 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 taxes are not as high as Harrisburg City, but they are higher and. The value of Lebanon has been low for a long time, so the millage is high. Yeah. Now that things are starting at like I looked Even at a, I looked at a house personally. Um it was listed for three thirty. Um it was a nice like uh colonial 
you know, stone. Yeah. Um, had a had a library in it, whatnot. Oh, nice. um, it was gorgeous. For and, your uh, primary? Yeah, for a personal, and okay. um, it was only assessed at two forty, mm-hmm. and I couldn't pull the trigger because the taxes were like seven grand a year. Jeez. Holy shit! Yeah, That's and insane. I was like, I was like, what the. That's crazy. Imagine if they like reassess yeah. this. I buy it for three thirty, and two years later it That's gets like reassessed. Hershey. That's like eleven grand. Then. Yeah, yeah, dude. I was like, crazy. I'm not. And it was the only house that my fiance actually liked that we looked at. Dang. It was gorgeous. It was three bedroom, two and a half bath. Yeah. Um, had all the character in it. So the hardwood had the large, you know, six inch plus trim. Yeah. Um, had the library. Why are the taxes um, so high on that? Because was of the city, the millage, like that's what I was saying. Like most of the homes led in are yeah. the value so low, so the millage got to be high so that you can even actually ma- you get some tax out of it. So the yeah. really nice homes, you're getting you're getting murdered that's on. Crazy. It was terrible, and I could not justify. And yeah, to this day, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little. I go back to that, like, damn, like I should have bought it. Yeah, but How God had that? this was only like two years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just was like, I can't, I can't justify paying seven grand a year in taxes, and yeah. then knowing that, like, even if it's even if they up. don't raise taxes, right. but they reassess, it's gonna go up. It's gonna yeah. be crazy. You spent ten grand a year in taxes, like, nah, come on for a, and it, and again, it was it was a big, it was thirty six hundred square feet, two car garage, and I think it was like just under a half. A, it was like point four acres in Lebanon, which. That's good. In the city, like it was yeah, nice, nice flat yeah. land. It did like um, there was like a like so part of the yard. Oh, it also had a sunroom by the way, like a four oh, seasons that's room. Nice. So that was another added. Yeah. So off of that, then you had, had a. Do uh, you ever guys hear of flagstone? Yeah. Flag, flagstone. You guys probably see it at Harrisburg. So you know when you go to basement and it's that flat stone that's stacked. Mm-hmm. Like the basement so, walls. Yeah. It's what we call flagstone. Yeah. I forget the the Dunn Cannon property got that. Okay. I forget what the real term is, but um. It had that as the back patio, and then it had a little bit of grass, and then it did have like a retaining wall, and then the rest it had a big open piece of just yeah. grass, That's and it was nice. nice. Yeah. But I just I just couldn't do the taxes. So like Lebanon definitely has crazy taxes. Yeah. So go back to the dollar house. I negotiate. I'm like, look, I'll buy this house, whatever. Um, yeah. Take it off your hands. Yeah. So we come to an agreement of like uh, we'll transfer it to you for a dollar. So I go to. I won't. You, I won't say the attorney's name, but now that I'm in this business and whatnot, I I got. Well, I feel like I got fleeced. You know what I mean? It, Did you? Yeah, I ended up spending like twenty five hundred bucks to do the transaction. Damn. Uh, yeah, which you is paid the fees on then? a dollar house. No, so like <laughs> this. It, it, no, that was the thing. So like, um, how do I? I don't want to like. Definitely don't <laughs> so want to like, say his name. But yeah, yeah. now that I'm in the game and whatnot, like, I, so it's a dollar, right? Right. The purchase price was a dollar. Was a dollar. Yeah. And um, the Just, taxes are 400 So, like, even if you, you, know, you prorate it. <laughs> yeah. So, long story short, um, they started diving into the title work, whatnot. And mm-hmm. here it came back that the um, the estate was never uh, handled correctly. Like, oh, or, there was something geez. with the estate. Yeah. Um, so Mary, now in the state of PA, if husband and wife, like it just automatically transfers to the wife. Right. So there's, there's no inheritance tax. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost positive that husband to wife or wife to husband, there's no inheritance tax. It just immediately <laughs> goes over. Um, but they never filed the property on the um, tax return for the estate in whatever, 92 when it happened. That's how oh, long sure. ago the husband passed away. Yeah. Nice. Um, so the attorney's like, oh, man, this is going to, you know, we got to amend the tax return and uh, the, 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 open this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't know what the fuck. I did not know what the fuck he's talking about. I'm like, okay. And you well, had no mentor at the time. You're just going. For I'm it. just yeah, going. I'm, I'm just sitting with this attorney. And I'm like, he's telling me these things. I'm like. Yeah, I'm curious. So, like, what's your mindset going into this? Like, are you thinking about, I'm going to do a fix and flip? I'm just gonna... I was going to flip it. That was my first initial thought process. Like, yeah. I'm going to do all the work. Because you have, like, some yeah. construction background. Yeah, so. I could do the work. Um, I, I, I have the guys that, like, you know, I mean, been in the construction field like i got buddies that are yeah plumbers and roofers and all that other stuff so i was like planning to flip it yeah and i'm saying with this attorney he's saying this and the first thing i'm thinking is like what the fuck is this gonna cost right you know what i mean like clearly just said i had no money which i did have some cash i had like 10 grand cash um but i didn't want to touch it you know what i mean i yeah. didn't really want to just reserves. i wanted to use that towards the work and everything else Makes like that about. so yeah. he's he's saying that it's gonna cost this much and whatnot and i was like well why don't they fucking pay for it and he goes <laughs> And I'll never forget because it, it, I can't stand when someone's condescending. You know what I mean? And he was like, well, they don't seem like the type of people to pay that. And I was like, I looked down. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? 
Yeah. And he just, I didn't say it that way, but I basically like questioned, like, what does that even mean? What are you talking about? And I said, he goes, well, you know, they, you know, with every, the circumstances and basically acted as a lawyer, like their circumstances are showing that statistically speaking, they, they most likely won't pay that. And I was like, well, I'm going to go ask them because I'm not paying it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I called them up and sure as hell, they said, sure, we'll pay for it. Wow. <laughs> so it was like it was yeah. like sixteen hundred dollars like when it all came down to it, plus <laughs> then the fines, which was like another five hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. So like they ended up have to come out of pocket, I think like almost two grand. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was like, well just ask them. Yeah. Um, so and on these assumptions. Yeah. Well, and I try to get back to that because like being in you know, once you're in the business for so long and anything, right, you start mm-hmm. to build bad habits or just experience of like, well, this I've dealt with this type of seller before. Yeah. I already know the answer. Yeah. So I always try to get, to go back to that moment of like that Noah, that, you know, of right. like, well, you don't really know until you ask him. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so yeah. And then I, I still, and I never even looked at it and probably cause I'll get pissed off and the guy's still at the attorney's office and I'd probably go say something to him, but I never actually <laughs> looked at like what the fuck they charged me for. Yeah. Um, but I'm assuming it's just the time that I had spoken with him, like the phone calls and all yeah. that stuff. So that they'd be racking up them. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's probably charged me two fifty an hour. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, Crazy. I didn't at the time. I really didn't know these things. Right. right. Um, but we got the deal done and I, I closed it, uh, January 17th, 2017 for $1. Wait, wow. Um, 25 years old. I would have been, yes. Yeah. Yep. 25. My son was four going on five. It, it, yeah. And I was still with his mom at the time, but at, so that, that property then from, so I bought that. Mm-hmm. I worked full time at Hershey park. Yeah. So now I'm at Hershey park. So now I got a pay raise. I went from $15 and 50 cents to $28. Wow. An hour. Yeah. It was fucking insane. I was what are like, you doing? I was an electrician for Hershey park. So like I would, you know, sky rush, nice um, yeah, man. Um, I helped wire the the drop towers when they were installed. Yeah. Um, Getting paid pretty well. Yeah. Twenty eight. Well, tw- uh, so twenty eight back then. Yeah, twenty eight. Yeah. Plus, then I made an extra thirty to fifty thousand a year on the side business for my electrical business. No um, so like you're doing pretty good. I made over a hundred grand probably from when I first took that job up until then, like going into to to my partnership in Star Wars and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like. When you accumulately took everything into it, like Hirsch Park, I made twenty bucks an hour plus overtime. Like yeah. we ran rides. They like when they didn't have kids to run the rides, they would have the the maintenance guys run them. So like I'm getting paid double time, time and a half, like press a button, button yeah. you know, make you know, Easy. make it fun of people because like yeah. dude, I, I ran t- uh, Title Force, yeah. and oh, yeah. uh, people would get super scared of that, and I just kind of you know, oh, you're you're. Your lap bar's not down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now people get famous on TikTok for doing that shit. And I was yeah. getting yelled at. Um, our managers weren't too happy about that because people would complain and whatnot. Um, oh, shit, wait. Yeah, yeah, oh, seriously. God. Dude, one lady, I'm not going to lie, she she was in my face screaming at me. And the manager came and stuff like that. And she wanted to sue us and all this other shit. And I'm like, yo, for for me Just saying, you're, yeah, like, come, come on, on now. Yeah. Like, you that scared, don't get on the damn ride. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I made really great money. And... Um, I, I leveraged that, um, to do this property. Um, but it took me 18 months to renovate that property. Um, by, I did 70% of it myself. Um, I brought in buddies. Um, you know, I brought in a plumber, um, Earl Gill, shout out to him. He actually runs, he has his own full-time business now. It's crazy to like see from the time he did that for me to where he's at now. Um, Another buddy of mine, uh, he actually ended up working for me um, with uh, Star War, uh, Star War Properties in Astronoa as a carpenter. Um, he helped me frame up. My other buddy, you know, helped me hang drywall. My my dad and his his OG, the guy who taught one of the guys who taught him, finish the drywall. Um, he helped me hang the cad. You know, just like yeah. all this stuff. But eighteen yeah. months because I it's a good learning my son, experience. I mean, you're basically starting with a gut job. It was so it's like for your first gut. one. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. I'll never forget. Um, there was a baby toilet upstairs that was filled with baby shit, and it was all, it was smeared across the wall. And um, I made uh, I made my little cousin and my uh, at the time it, it, my son's uncle, which was my son's mom's like, little brother. Yeah. Um, I made them. I was like, you guys can clean this room up. <laughs> all I hear is like this, like gagging and stuff. And I'm downstairs, like, oh man, you know. So, so it was a good time, like great experience, a lot, a lot yeah. of learning experience of like going through the woes of contractors. You know, yeah. I mean? it's it's being on the other side of it. You know, what I mean, I was a contractor, so like I was on the side of like, you know, 
the guy dealing with the customer. Yeah. Right. Now I'm on the other side of like, I'm dealing with hiring the contractors. Yeah, the fuck tards that are like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. guys not showing up. There's a, there's a Connors, which was a bar down the street. And like, I had this one guy literally like, I literally went down to the bar cause I knew where he was at right. and had to go in and be like, bro, if you don't get this to fuck on, like mm -hmm. I'm not paying you shit. Yeah. And um, there he is. And he's like, Oh, I can't today. I'm, you know I mean? I'm uh, already, I'm already at lunchtime. I'm like, bro, it's yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> you're telling me you're so slammed that you can't freaking fit it. You can't go walk five minutes up the street again and get back to work. And, so that's yeah, that, crazy you had the confidence that early to be like nah come on let's yeah, go no. Not playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah well it, i was already in that field like yeah you kind of know how i've already, already yeah construction and this is the thing like the way the world's shaping and whatnot hey, construction will never change mm -hmm. yeah. like the, you're the, gonna get the same blue collar dudes you are gonna get the same like i've already i've fought on job sites like 100 percent. like in the back of the fucking porter john just getting an ass whipping at a young age because you know what i mean I thought I was big shit and, you know, someone was fucking with me. So I was like trying to, you know, fuck with the back and yeah. didn't turn out well. But like it sounds savage and gruesome, but it, it's its own like ecosystem. Yeah. And once you know that ecosystem, I feel like you can start to like have some control or at least some understanding yeah, like right. this. I knew where he was at. I knew exactly where he's at. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a, you know what I mean? He was a known drunk when he wasn't drunk, did great work right. when he was drunk. You right. had to go fucking grab him by the shirt and fucking be like, bro, what are you doing? Right. Um, but uh, so I had already had that like that level of experience and just the kind of just the knowledge. To yeah, just the it. savageness to be like, you got to either fuck up or fuck off, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the learning curve was the uh, expenses. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. money. Did you and have then, an idea of what rehab was going to cost going into it? Fuck no. No. No, so, I just cause like, I hope I got enough. I just was <laughs> like, wait, so I started, I had the $10,000 cash. I went, I was making good money. So I went to members first. They gave me a personal line of credit, which I'm not gonna lie at the time. I was like, oh, this is easy as shit. I walked in, mm -hmm. I filled everything out and they said, we'll give you 10 grand. It's like no collateral, no nothing. Cool. Wow. Cool. Send it. So I, I, I started, I started using that. I used that up and then I was like, well, I'm going to need more money. Um, cause I didn't want to touch the cash. I really didn't want to use my, like. I was just started reserve. using it and it started making my stomach hurt. I was like, gosh damn, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Uh, and exactly. I knew I was gonna flip it. Yeah. Um so I went back to members first. I was like, so I I, I used the 10 and I actually ended up using my cash to pay that 10 back off. Okay. Just to keep that line open. Yeah. Um so I could go to them and I said, Hey, I need more money. And they gave me 25 then. So they closed the 10, opened up 25. So and was that zero percent interest? Um, it was what was that man back then it wasn't it was high in my mind but it wasn't high at all like it was like eight percent okay yeah. it was yeah. you know what i mean but was that the 25 on top of the 10 or no so I, so additional they, they took the yeah they took the 10 closed that out and gave me 25 okay um but no collateral which yeah. you know we all know in this game how hard it is to get an unsecured line of credit yeah um you know, and I'm 25 years old, 26, whatever it was. It's like, right. oh, this is fucking easy. I could just, I'll just keep going back to them and saying I need more money. So, <laughs> so yeah, used the line of credit, got it all done. Um, I was total into it, 35 grand. That's not bad. No, full gut, new roof, new windows. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, I know. Like now that I look back, I was yeah. like, gosh, damn, I wish I could do full, <laughs> you killed it on yeah, that full flips like that. So, but at the time you got to think like the, the value of it was only like 50 some that, like on average now. Mm -hmm. Um, once I, I finally, 18 months later, finally fucking finished it. Um, crazy story is, is, uh, this is now 2018, uh, June of 2018. I got fired from Hershey Park. Yeah. So What'd one of the greatest, for? uh, basically just not showing the fuck up. Like okay. it got to a point where I was so miserable with my life and, um, just everything that like, I didn't want to fucking be there. Yeah. So, you know, I had vacation. Plus then I also, you, there's a point system. Well, it's like, well, the fucking points fall off every so often. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it. Well, you know what I mean? I'll just, Use them up. I'll, I'll get it to a certain extent and I'll, I'll chill out for a little then, bit yeah. and I'll do it again. And not a good employee at that time. I was not, I was now, now I'm getting into flips and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so that happened and, um, you sell that property. So that was the thing is like my mom, she convinced me to, to hold that property. Mm -hmm. um, my mom's biggest supporter. Like, I'm a mama's boy. Hardcore. 100%. Like, okay. straight up mama's boy. Um, and she uh, 
she fucking hated that property. She, for 18, for those months, for that year and a half, she was just like, what are you doing? And there was plenty of times that I, like, broke down in that house of, like, what the fuck am I doing? You know, you're sitting there just thinking of you like. You bought yourself a headache. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Nights when I didn't have, because now me and my son's mom are separated. So like, you know, you think a lot when you're by yourself and I'd be in that property at like 10 o'clock at night, which the electric's not on. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking gutted. It's cold as fuck because it's in the winter. Um, And just sitting there like, what the fuck am I doing, God? Like, what, should I just get rid of this? Like, did I make a mistake? All this other stuff. So mm-hmm. it was definitely like trial and tribulation through those 18 months. Um. I have pictures of my son. Like he, I used to set up a because I had um a little uh the husky uh it was like a toolbox that like could wheel yeah. so you could like you know pop the top and then sit on it yeah and I would set him up where he could sit on it and then I'd have the boxes set up where he'd then have his iPad and he'd sit there with his jacket beanie I I had um uh safety glasses safety glasses on him just you know what I mean there's yeah. yeah just in case but yeah. he sit he he loved sitting there and I'd just work you know what I mean do whatever I got to do oh, so those are cute. those are good I have good memories of it, but there was definitely memories of just like what the fuck am I doing here you know yeah. I mean? like is this even is this a stupid and then I got guys at work giving me shit you know what I mean talk call me oh the next slum lord you're a fucking idiot why are you buying that shit you ain't gonna yeah. do nothing with you know yeah. guys being guys just bullshit you know you're at work and again I'm in it's Hershey Park was still somewhat of a construction environment, so mm-hmm. they they they're, all fucking they're you too. dude they're cruel. You know what I mean? Like they say some fucked up shit. Yeah, and um, it's up to you to just take it for a grain of salt, right? But it would get to me. Like there'd be at nights where I'd be like, "Damn, this dude's this guy's fucking right." Like, what the fuck am I doing? You know? Um, am I gonna lose my ass? Is this gonna work through? Yeah. Um, and it all worked out. So fast forward, I get fired, and um. <laughs> Thank the Lord, I was trying to get a refi. Yeah. My mom convinced me I got it rented for 800 bu- 800, 850 bucks a month. Okay. Uh, for a two bed? Yeah, two bed at that time. Yeah, which was crazy. That's not bad. Um, I got that um, with the line of credit. Um, yeah, I was cash flowing like 400 some dollars a month, which was oh, that's good. Yeah, which yeah. was killer. You know what yeah. I mean? Taxes were still only 400 bucks a year. So I was like, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. Um, so I went to a PSECU. And um, somehow, some way, like, I'm fired. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not bankable. And I always say that, you know what I mean, to everybody, like, um, you know, shout out to Isaiah and David. Like, I always tell them, like, there's going to be a point in time where, like, you're going to become, like, same with you guys. Like, you'll be able to become bankable. But there's a period in time when you first start a business, like, the, mm-hmm. you're not bankable. The bank ain't going to give you my, shit. I saw my full-time job. Yeah, see? And that's yeah, good. That's, mm-hmm. Like, that's good to leverage. You know yeah. what I mean? Honestly, like, I look back and like, damn, if I could have just sucked it up for like another six months at Hershey Park, I could have probably leveraged the shit out of that then. I could have probably got more lines of credit and all that other shit. But mentally and physically, you were just dumb. God, finally. Because yeah. I had signs. There were so many signs that was like, I should quit. Like, I remember that winter. Before that <laughs> summer, the winter of 2017, 2018, like, you know, mm-hmm. um, my one foreman, good guy, really good. Like, I'm really appreciative of it. And he probably don't even know it. But um, he was a construction guy. A lot of the guys at Hirsch Park were, weren't construction. Like, they there was guys that had worked at Hirsch Park. It was the only job they ever had in their life. They graduated high school, got a job at Hirsch Park, retired. There, retired. That's a lot of people's life story. Like, yeah, in and that's our like, area. which yeah. is yeah, and it's yeah. like mind blowing when I thought about it. But these guys had no background in construction. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how it was in my. I work at a warehouse, forklift operator. Yeah, yeah. Shit. And yeah, there's guys there who are like 65, 67 been years there old, forty some years. They've been there forty some years. Yep. Yeah, we just and had a guy hit forty five years. Two days ago. Wow. And right. they're going to get a fucking clock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just like, like my grandpa worked at uh, Keystone Milling for almost 30 years. And when he retired, they gave him a fucking clock. Mm-hmm. Said, good luck. Yeah. It's just like, uh, what the yeah. fuck, man? Dude, they didn't give him a clock the one time. Uh, there was this girl named Stephanie, actually. Yeah. Was, <laughs> <laughs> she had uh, 35 years and like it was time for her to retire. Had a little cake. She got a little piece. Yeah, a little party. Boss said, Shook her hand. It was like a ten little minute break for all of us. Say like goodbye. Ten minute break. Get ten minute break. Yeah. I'm, yep. That's a whole nother conversation. I know. I can't stand that shit. I'm like, you were so unappreciative of like this person. Like they nah. dedicated their entire life to this company. And it's they cut them a piece of cake and shake their hand. Like fuck you. <laughs> yeah, and that's but and that's the thing is like people, you got to realize like that person may be happy and you know grateful for it. You know what I mean? She was an alcoholic. Oh, well, we'll yeah. yeah. So then there you go. You know what I mean? Like, 
there is a time and place for like like we need we need employees. Okay. Yes. We like you have to. Yeah. Um, and it is business, and it, it sounds cruel, but at the end of the day, like, without it's them, reality. You can yeah. We have to accept reality for what it is, and yeah. it and things like that may or may not ever change. You know what I mean? And uh, that's yeah. the I think that's where it's like mm. accepting. I don't think it'll ever get to the point where it's like everyone wants to be the boss. And, no. You know, oh no. No heck no. No way. I have I I know I have I have buddies that that came to Hershey Park that ran business a successful business that came to Hershey Park. <laughs> To finish out their career, yeah. because People they were fucking tired the of it. Yeah. There, this guy had a twenty-year successful business, mom and pop. He was a plumber. Mm-hmm. He fucking gave that up to come to Hershey Park to live out the, his last ten years because wow. he was just fucking tired of it and it's crazy. knew that you know working at Hershey Park wasn't like the hardest working fucking job in the world, and you got yeah. paid really well. Yeah, so got some they'd rather take the easier route. Exactly, you yeah. know what I mean. And, and it, once you get to that age, like somewhat understandable. Dude, I get it. Like, I. I was there last year. I contemplated. I actually had a few job offers from a few different people to come work for them, and I contemplated it yeah. because I was so burnt out. Oh, you're like, going through like a rough patch. Yeah, I was just so burnt the fuck out of like. Well, We're why, gonna get into yeah, that. Too. Why not? So, so yeah, back to the dollar house. So 2018, lost my fucking job. Just got with my fiance now. Mm-hmm. She just moved in. So that she was definitely like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Where are you staying at this time? Um, what do you like? During this, like, all this going on. Yeah. So I had an apartment uh, right. in Lebanon, and um, I was renting, and um, me and her I, were talking, and um, we finally, I was like, you know, we're together and whatnot. Just move in with me. Like, just, I'm always a financial guy. Like, yeah. I was like, look, you, can sleep, sense you can sleep in another fucking room if it makes you feel better, but, like, mm-hmm. financially, like, why the fuck are you paying rent, and I'm paying rent? Move in. So she moved in, and so it was definitely it? a big jump for her, but it, it, it made sense. Yeah. And I'm that's the way I think. Like, I'm more... You're going to look at the numbers every time. I know. And it, like mm-hmm. it, it, and then I fucking lost my job, and it was like, what the fuck? It's you like, know good thing she's here. Yeah. So, but I had my electrical business. So, like, the day yeah. after I got fired, yeah. the next day I was back to work. Like, I had so much side work for almost a year that I just compressed it. Well, that's and I, I called everybody. I was yeah. like, hey, look, I, got, I can move you here. I can move you here. So... Boom, went into that, got the refinance from PSECU. It appraised for seventy six thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's you're awesome. talking like a quarter more than the average really sale out. price. So yeah. that was killer. I got my thirty five grand back, plus That's they gave me sixty. Nice. So they yeah. gave me a HELOC for up to sixty grand. Um because I didn't owe anything on the house. So wait, how did you refinance though? Because you got fired. You gotta ask PSCCU that. Yeah. I have no fucking idea. Yeah. I because I file I I mean, were they doing DSCR at that time? No, I, I honestly can't tell you how the fuck it happened. I fought, I it was did, just a God moment right there. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. I like, I can't tell you that, like, because when I, now that I look at it, I'm like, how the fuck did a bank yeah. give me anything with no job? Well, I was self employed. Right. Right. Um, you know what I mean? And it, yeah, it was just, yeah. So I got this, I got that. And it mm-hmm. was fucking saved my life. That's fucking like, crazy. it literally, it, I was shitting bricks. Let's just say that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I wasn't going to be able to get my money back. And like, yeah. again, rental. My worst case scenario, though, just sell the house. I would, Yeah, I would have yeah. sold it. But if there was a tenant in it, so I would have not got oh. as, as much, much. Yeah, as much as I wanted. Yeah. So I was just, what the fuck is going on? So mm-hmm. I got that, got myself paid back, and I was ready to rock and roll. Um, Do you have any mentors with getting the tenant in there? Nope. Like, no? Nope, Facebook. Where, where'd you find the lease? Wow. Uh, where did I find the lease? Type it in on Google. You probably just took the one no. from your apartment and just copied it. <laughs> changed the address. I think I got it from somebody. I, no, oh, yeah. I think I got it from some. I don't know. I didn't pay for it, though. I didn't, like, yeah. It's not like I went to a turn. Like, I I forget where I... No, you guys are asking good questions because, yeah. honestly, like that shit's a blur. Right, it went, a while ago, it went so, so yeah. smooth. Like, yeah. I got the tenant. got the I got them, yeah. and they were great tenants. Got them in place. Got the lease. Yeah. And um, they paid me, you know. Mm. I, think they, I think they were cash apping me, too, at the time. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it was it was smooth. So, I got that. And that started the journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now I'm self-employed. I got my first rental. I'm looking for my next flip. And then that's where Jay Davis came in into it. And um, I put a post up on Facebook. I was like, yo, look, can't find a fucking deal. Like, I need a mentor. Like, I here's my resume. I did this first one. Here's my construction background. Like, I got cash. Yeah. Someone give me a chance. And uh, Robert Klepper um, from Iron, uh, Iron Valley. Valley. Yeah, one, yeah. Of, one, of the, one of the owners and stuff like that. Saw it. And actually tagged Kaya, Jay's sister, and was like, yo, doesn't your brother flip? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Yo, she makes the best cakes. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, she's amazing. She, yeah. she fucking baked queen. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so from there, I got connected with Jay. Well, I knew the family. Like, I grew up with Jay's youngest brother. Like, that was my guy. Yeah. Um, I knew Ethan and Zach. Like, I knew all his family, and they knew they knew my brother and Jay. We just put it all together, and Jay was like, "All right, all right you know what I mean? Like, let's do it." Yeah. Cool. So I was trying to find a deal, trying to find a deal. And then finally he was like, yo, I got one in Harrisburg. I'm fucking slammed. Um, he had a pri- he had a hard money company um, lending home. It was, it was from California. Oh, wow. They were fucking awesome. In the yeah. beginning, they were awesome. They were literally just, here's the cash. Yeah. What kind of experience did he have? Like, how long um, was he he was doing it for like a year or two now. Oh, okay. Um, so he had like seven going on at once. Oh, wow. And he was like, yo, this is too much. You went balls to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, a hundred. Yeah. And so I was like, I was like. He goes, I'll give you this one. I got the lending already set up. It's under contract. We close on this date. Blah, blah, blah. Go check it out. So I went to go check it out. Sharon Street in Harrisburg. And that was my first flip. Wow. Um, he gave it to me, no strings attached. He covered the lending and we did a joint venture agreement underneath. So like I basically had uh, rights to the to the property through our joint venture agreement. Yeah. Um, all the lending went through him. It was in his name. And then um, I do the work, use my cash, and then I tell him, you know, hey, I need, I did this work. Mm-hmm. He called the 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 company. They cut, they come out, do a quick inspection. Two Give days you later, draw. he had a lot of trust draw. in you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what. Like now that I look back at it, it's like holy fuck. Like this That's guy, crazy. that was a risk, yeah. a huge risk. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I took it for, I didn't take it for granted, but I never really realized like how big of a risk for him it was. Yeah. Um, and that was a hell of a fucking. That was my first one. Was rough. I think on on paper. Made like thirty ish, whatever. But like in true dollars, I think it made like ten grand. Yeah. Like after all the holding and all the bullshit, it was under contract twice. Like it was yeah. definitely a rodeo for my first one. Yeah. Um. In Harrisburg too. So what? You were yeah. driving like yeah. forty five minutes every day. Yep. Every day I did electrical for it. Um. You know what I mean? So. So yeah, that's that was the beginning of the journey, and now here we are. Fast forward to uh, you know, what is it, March twenty twenty four? Um, you're talking six years, you know, later. Um, speed up to twenty twenty. Um, 2020, January, 2020 is when I gave up electrical. I did a project, uh, a guy, a local investor guys own, owns a lot of rentals, built his house during the winter mm-hmm. and I, we fucking wired it. And I think that was the last straw of like, I'm never fucking doing this again. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, who the fuck builds and dead of what, like yeah. my, my trench for my pipe, like to run my electrical service to his house was fucking frozen. Oh. Yeah. It was just, dude, it was so bad. It yeah. was like. And I was already like one foot out the door. Yeah. Like I, the flips were getting going and You're stuff like that. just focused on real estate. Yeah. And like the electrical really wasn't like doing it. You know what I mean? So that Did you have ha- anybody working with you on the electrical? Or is that kind of just. I always had like, I never had employees. I lie. I did. I had two employees, but I had a lot of buddies. Yeah. I, I could, man, you know how I many people I taught how to do electrical work. Like, oh, liter- wow. like mm-hmm. I have like four buddies that literally can wire a house now because I, I'd be like, hey, man, I need, they worked um, second shift or yeah. part time or whatnot. And I'd be like, hey, yeah, I'll pay you. 15, 20 bucks an hour, hand hand. come give me a hand and then yeah. I'll show you how to do it. That's um, awesome. so yeah, 2020 comes, I give that up and I do, I'm, I'm in real estate now and you know, full time and I'm doing flips and whatnot. Um, well, we came to you, I think first time I met you, I think it was like, is that end of 20? No, it was probably like, I don't know. When, well, we it was beginning of 22. Met... I yeah. Think. When did we, you so had I got just... my license in 2020. So it would have been, so it was, you had just got was... October yeah, 2020. You had just I got, because I was going to say, you had just gotten your license and yeah. we met at um, the coffee shop in Lebanon. It was at the time called Wrinkle and Boone. Yeah. That place was awesome. Nice it was a mom. It, yeah. It was a mom, mom and daughter. Yeah. Love that place. This place was awesome. I wish. Yeah. yeah. You were like the second investor that she ever introduced me to. Yeah. He's okay. the first as, one I ever met. Yeah. Too. Really? So it was like, yeah. as soon as I was getting into it, we had one, uh, it was like a brunch with Jeff Murdoff. Okay. So, mm-hmm. We had him on a podcast a couple of episodes. Yeah, yeah, ago. yeah. And then second one was like us setting up our operating agreement, LLC. Yeah. You she gotta meet like, this guy. She was like, I know just the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember like coming to your cool. office, driving over. I was like all nervous. I'm like, shit. He's about to be like this And I'm dude. a fucking dude. I was, yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. A lot like me. So cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> And it bro. goes back a little bit further. So when you hit me up about, yo, I want to see this house. Before we the even partnered. Tumble. He was like, um, hey, you want to partner with this deal with me? And I was like, with me? I was like, sure, let's do it. But I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, let me call up Noah. So I called Will. I was like, hey, I think we got some. I don't know if it's a deal, though. Yeah. And then it turned out it wasn't a deal. Yeah. But then, you know, I introduced you to Skyler Yeah, man. And, no, and yeah. like I, people call me all the time. Like literally I have text messages, phone calls every single day. Like I, yeah. I started a lot of, like I have a lot of good friends that I've, 
coached or whatever get into real estate, like leverage their W two job or whatnot. Yeah. I fucking love it. Like I yeah. love when people call and I and then like hearing the stories, like it's crazy. I just was with somebody last week and we were chopping it up of like first time running into each other or whatnot and, yeah. and like everything like that and like seeing him and i always say that to you you guys like mm-hmm. seeing you guys where you're at now like i say and david you know what i mean yeah big uh, i fucking love it yeah, i love looking crazy. back in the sea like and we didn't growth. even have our first deal yeah. Like yeah and now look at you guys like that's what i fucking <laughs> love and i love giving gary visa there's no fucking secret sauce mm-hmm. like i'll tell you exactly how i do things and at the end of the day you still can't do them because you're not me You can take them and mold them to how you guys do them and make it successful, but it ain't a fucking secret. You know what I mean? And that's, that's how I like being in construction, the old heads, the OGs and stuff like that were like that trade secrets, like not they didn't because they didn't want to lose their job or blah, blah, blah. And all this other bullshit. It's like, there's plenty of fucking food to go around. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, it's never bite me in the ass. I've always been open of like how I do it when I do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have no idea if it's the right or wrong way, but yeah. you know what I, mean? I just yeah. fucking do it. And, <laughs> how, and if you guys your advice. Yeah. take it and you guys mold it to how you guys we didn't do know it. Really, how are we going to pay ourselves? Like, yeah, yeah, nah. Should we? Nah. Yeah, no, that's crazy. I, I love it. I love it. So, you know, I met like Jay and in 2019 is when I met my partner, David, David okay. Warner Jr., who is now the uh, district judge um, in Paul Meyer and Grantville. Sure. Um, he, I met him, uh, ran, like we set up at a, at a taco joint in Lebanon, La Placita. If you're ever in Lebanon, mm-hmm. fucking awesome tacos. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lupita and Sergio are really good people. Um, so we met there, spit him. I literally sp- spit him all these like aspirations and I was already flipping. So I was, yeah. I was like, I want to do this. I want to do this. He didn't say one fucking word the whole time. And I'm just like going off. And then literally like towards the end of the meeting, he just was like, okay, go buy a property. Wow. I was like, what? He was like, go buy a property and then we'll figure it out. I was like, what the fuck? I just talked for like an hour, bro. And that's what the, like, could have said that like 45 yeah, minutes ago. Know. So <laughs> Save you some time. <laughs> that I went, I found a, um, a, a three unit. Um, at the time it was, a, it was like, it was being used as a two unit. Um, uh, and did the numbers, bought it for like 62. I was like, yo, we put 20 into it. It's probably worth like a hundred, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. 110. Um, and that was my first three unit. We, I fucking, and I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Like I came to this, I, I went to David cause I was like, man, financially stable, you know, attorney, like, man, this is awesome. Like yeah. he can, he can back me. So I went to him and I got this property. I so, ended up putting all the money out in my fucking pocket anyways. I got the <laughs> private lending. I found the deal and I financed the rehab. Yeah. Um, and I texted, I was like, bro, I was like, I need cash. Like I'm fucking broke right now. Like I just used up all like my, my reserve funds. Cause I had flips mm-hmm. going on and whatnot. To, to rehab this shit um next day he wrote a check and you know what i mean it was a oh, big yeah. deal but it was just like i was i was sweating i was like i fucking did this deal i got all this shit <laughs> I'm, like, and I'm partners curious. now and now yeah. i'm fucking broke i was curious um, i was like so where is he playing this partnership at all? <laughs> so yeah and that's why i was like what the fuck so yeah. nope fucking wrote the check i got my cash back and then um nice. we went through uh six months later we ended up refining it and um it appraised for like 116 oh wow yeah so we we're 80 into it um full, you know turnkey um, and that was my first three years. That was 2019, the end of 2019. Yeah. Um, so now I got this dynamic of like David with Star Wars Properties. We yeah. created that LLC. And then I have um, Star Property Solutions, which was my first real estate business. Okay. Um, joint venturing with Jay Davis, um, flipping. Um, so he's kind of like your buy and hold guy. And then you got the- That's how it guy. started. Okay. And then 2020, March. Everybody's familiar with March of 2020, man. COVID hit and- fucking world shut Stock down Stock market dropped. everything just went <laughs> yeah. it's crazy yeah. um i'm sitting on my porch and like i'm questioning my life of like what's my purpose like what am i doing here i'm over here with jay i'm over here with david all these other things don't i get a phone call from david saying hey like what the fuck are we doing like yeah. are we married are we you know are <laughs> yeah. we seeing other ch- people like when do we, <laughs> how do we like when do we decide that this deal goes with you because I, I actually did a couple flips with him mm-hmm. uh-huh. um like how did like so i was like you know that's crazy i was just thinking like why the fuck don't we just bring it all together and funnel and make one business? Right. Um, so does he know him? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I introduced them and like, actually Jay has hired David before and you know, stuff like that, but they okay. didn't know each other previous to that. Yeah. Um, so 2020 was a year of like making that decision or wrapping everything up of like, okay, I'm going to wrap everything up that I got over here with Jay. Yeah. David was wrapping up cause he was doing stuff with other people and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then January, 2021 is where, um, 
was the first full year of like Star Wars properties. Um, who was the first person on payroll? We started payroll, started, excuse me, hiring. You know, we had like Cheyenne. She was, a, she was my office manager. She was, she was a fucking glue. She did everything. Yeah. Um, Jay Frank, who um, ended up becoming my director of construction, he was our the first contractor that we brought on board, put on payroll. I went on payroll. I'll never forget that. The first time I was on payroll for myself, that was, yep. you know, something. Yeah. I remember like, when you were telling us about that. Yeah, that was yeah. huge to me. I was like, oh, wow, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. So, so 2021, then Star Wars got ramped up. Well, so, wait, who was your, other than the contractor, who was your first hire? I want to say it was Cheyenne. And what did she do? She was the office manager, so she handled all the admin and marketing. So she okay. literally was the one who was uh, constantly in communication with setting up utilities, getting insurance situated, communicating with customers, people that are messaging on social media. Yeah. Um, she was doing all the marketing. She, her, her background is, is uh, videography, and film, and photography. Okay. So that's how I brought it. That's how I first met her because I was like, oh, you could do some some photos. Marketing, and everything. Marketing, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. she just fucking started she kicking ass over. and started taking over. And it was like, oh, man, you can do you can do the books. You can do this. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. that. So she was, I think, my first and then Jay. Or it might have been vice versa. Mm-hmm. It might have been Jay first and then her. Um, but us three were the first original. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tammy, we had brought on um, Tammy Watermeyer, who is our our uh, resident manager. So we brought her on. Um, she handles all of our our rental stuff. Um, so she manages that aspect of it, and she's still with us today. Yeah. Okay. Um, How much do you pay her, if you don't mind? Like, um, so it's like a commission based. Um, okay. It's uh, I believe five percent of, of rents. Okay. Um, like I said, it's commission based. Yeah. Um, so she was never like a. It was never like a set check amount. Five percent of gross rent. Gross rent. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then she also like she charges us for. Um, That's better than like, property manager. Like filling yeah. filling it and whatnot. And then she's yeah. she's awesome. Like she'll go and turn the property herself too. Sometimes. Like, oh, well, depending that's on perfect. like oh yeah. man yeah and you know she charges for it and but it's it's great because then less stress on you. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. Tammy, if you're listening, you were fucking Shout amazing. Out to you. Yeah. Yeah. You and, to watch and, like yeah, like <laughs> the, all these people were great people, and I I I loved them all, and it was fantastic, and like I had a good good thing going on and um so that was 2021 mm-hmm. fast forward now like 2022 was another you know another so two full years then we got into 2023 yeah um the beginning so, of 2023 go ahead sorry so from 2021 to 2023 are you guys flipping and doing buy and hold yes just, we're doing both yeah, and wholesale one? Uh, and wholesale. Oh, I was doing whatever. Was, yeah, so I was worked best with the in the beginning. I didn't really wholesale. I kept everything. Yeah. yeah. Towards the end of 2021, yeah. early 2022 is when I started doing the wholesale like novation thing. Uh, okay. And I learned that from Latchall. You know, yeah. I mean? Latchall like gave me bits and pieces and whatnot, and and showed me the contract, all that stuff. And um, I should have listened to him for. I remember him. I remember the uh, sitting with him specifically mm-hmm. talking of like I should be wholesaling. And I was like, nah, man, I don't like wholesaling. I like buying. And I remember you telling me, you're yeah. like, ah, I don't know about it. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, you know, I will say that I should have, you know, took his advice. But we all go through what we have to do and whatnot. And I learned yeah. a lot. Um, and now that's where I'm at. I do do a lot more wholesaling now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we were flipped. And that, that was actually, I would say, like, it. one company that does all those things is not good. I will say that. Um mm-hmm. Because the, the 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 rental side of things is a very cash intensive upfront cost with mm-hmm. a little return up front. Yeah. Where flipping is pays the fucking bills, it gives you some nice chunks of profit, all this other stuff. Same thing with wholesale innovations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's when like, you merge those all into one entity and you're basically like living off one or the other, um basically the rentals were living off of, of the flips. You know what I mean? Which that takes away that energy. You know what I mean? If we're doing you know, Say we're doing a four unit building. Yeah. Well, we can't do five flips then. You know what I mean? Because it just the we weren't. Think the finances was getting like jumbled. It was. Well, it's not even that. It's it's the it's the the manpower, right? So if I'm doing like say I have to hit a quota of so many flips a year, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I start to add in some rentals in there. What was happening is like our manpower was getting taken away from that quota to, to do the rental to get that done, and you know what I mean because that's, that's just slowing yeah. the progression of. Exactly, which then right. that's the cash that's constantly coming in. Because once you get the rental done, what are you making You're a grand done. a month? You right. know what I mean? Like, versus I can make thirty grand in fucking two months or whatever it was. So right. I didn't have the balance where I wanted to be, and right. um, that definitely we grew. You know, we we have fifty two units. We were up to seventy five. 
Wow. Um, so when you think That's about so it, fast. in two years, so like when I go back to this, like Star Wars officially 100% started in 2021. Yeah. Even though we bought a three, we bought a couple units the year prior, but like full speed 2021. So 21 to 23 was full speed. Mm-hmm. We acquired 75 units. Do you have a Dang. strategy for like if it's a single family, you're going to flip it or multifamily, you're going to flip it? I did. I eventually okay. got to that point, but okay. it was to a point where it was like too late. You know, wow. it was like we were so stretched and so far thin. Um, I ended up selling twenty some units. We let we let go everybody. Yeah. Um, that was spring of twenty twenty three. That was last year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we just recently figured this out for ourselves yeah. as well. Twenty three was like, a was a fucking nut punch. Let's just say that. Um, yeah. it was a it was a shitty year for me when I look at everything as a whole. Um, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. I was just beaten. You know what I mean? I was exhausted. Financially? Uh, Are you still good? No, we like, yeah, like we were stretched. You know what I mean? Uh, like yeah. it was a constant, like we had tons of cash. It was just constantly coming in and constantly going out. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just beat down. You know what I mean? And then um, we pivoted to construction, um, you know, because when you do like what we were doing, your balance sheet's so fucking heavy. Yeah. You have so much debt, man. And that 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 definitely does weigh you down. Mm-hmm. Um so we were like, well, let's we're doing this and people are we had such a good following that people were like, you know, I had phone calls every week saying, Hey, will you come to our kitchen? Will you come do this? Blah blah. So we're like, let's just pit like why don't we pivot mm-hmm. and move to that direction where it's less debt heavy and more cash heavy. Right. Now you again you deal with you deal with customers and all that. it's another headache, but the balance sheet doesn't you're not you know, I paid Last year we paid two hundred and almost it's like two hundred sixty thousand dollars in interest. Wow! Holy to our shit. private lenders last year. Dang. Yeah. So anybody out there wants to do private lending, <laughs> yeah. give me a call. Um, Let us know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they made they made and that wasn't including fees. Yeah. That was interest. That was interest payments. Jesus that was straight up Christ. monthly interest payments. We were at one time we were up to fourteen thousand. That's a good way to market. Like just saying what you paid last year. Two hundred sixty thousand. That's a nugget right there. Just an interest. Just an interest. Yeah. Just and think about it. We got out of real estate in the spring. <laughs> there was there was still time. Wow. Yeah. So like you you yeah think about that. We had three quarters that we didn't really do anything. Oh, we were shit. wrapping up what we had. And that's just through private money. That's not like that was mortgages. Just, that was crazy. just private money. You, I'm not do you know that. what's your total loan amount was? We were at one point we were up to for private money we were probably at like two and a half million. Wow. Shit. Yeah, so we were pumping. We were fucking hauling ass and bumping. Yeah. And um, you know, when you know, it kinda it kinda was like this, you know what I mean? You you got the cone and he starts in here. Yeah. <laughs> so um Yeah, and, and um it broke my heart, you know what I mean? Like pivoting the construction and, and kinda getting out of real estate, like I didn't want to admit it, but it, it fucking broke me. It was something that I felt I failed. It was if I, like I, I realize now, if I wanted to be in construction, I would have fucking stayed. At I was going to say in the beginning, yeah. like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. So yeah, it, it was, was it was a learning curve for me, and um, I'm thankful for it all. You know, last year was a lot of like self searching, and yeah, you know, you know, looking for what's the purpose, what's what's God trying to show me now, and all yeah. that other stuff, and um, you know, like I I finally at the end of last year, you know, I, I stepped away from the, I gave up the construction business. You know I mean, I, I walked away from my partners and said, Hey, I don't need nothing in return. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Um, I was looking for an out with my other partner with David with star war. Um, I would say his main reason was just cause I needed cash. Like, you know, okay. now here I am jobless, homeless, don't know what the fuck's going on. Like yeah. I, I, I was nervous. I was stressed. I needed capital. Um, so what was your partner thinking at the time? Um, I'm, pr- I'm, I'm pretty sure he was not your not your like business partner. You're like significant other. My fiance. Yeah, we've been through a lot. Yeah. She is my rock, and honestly, like supported every single move that I've ever made in my life. Like we go back to that time where like she had just moved in, mm-hmm. and I got fired. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've built a very strong foundation of she trusts me, and she yeah. trusts that whatever I do is is in the best interest of the both of us and my family. Mm-hmm. Um. So. You That's know, powerful. Yeah, that was. I've no one's ever asked me that question actually, and I'm glad you did because I got to remind myself that of like I moved pretty smoothly. Like mm-hmm. in the beginning, I used to put like the house, our personal home, yeah, wasn't even in my name for the first year and a half. Oh, yeah. wow. I put it in her name because I didn't want the debt. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to be. She trusted you. Yeah, and I trusted her. Like at the end of the day, like it, 
that's a big thing. You know, yeah. the house is in her name and I'm living in it, you know. She could just and say, it, yeah. bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we have a very, like, the, the vehicles in the beginning, you know, I co-signed for a car in the beginning. Yeah. Um. You know, like, we built, that's why when people ask us, like, we're, we're supposed to be getting married in 2026. We just got engaged last year. That was probably the yeah. only great thing of last year. Yeah, congratulations. Um, and I got to say that out loud because I talk about how last year was such a fucking shitty year. Mm-hmm. But out of it, I got engaged and that was you got a fiance. It, it's it was, a blessing it, yeah. it was fucking awesome i it was in philly i love philly mm-hmm. with my you know we did it at the uh the what is it the magic the mosaic garden um you know it just was a great experience and i do got to throw that out there because i don't yeah. want her thinking like <laughs> it, it, she she knows she understands like yeah. it was a, it was a rough year but that was great so we're gonna get married in 2026 okay um and people are always like what the fuck why so long while well, it's like mm-hmm. We're you don't know fucking married, you know. Like my my soul and her soul are already. We've yeah. been connected. Since you guys I was are basically seventeen married. years old. Yeah. You know what I mean. I saw her walking across the gymnasium, and I'll never forget because I asked my buddies like, "Who the, whose legs are those?" <laughs> you know what I mean. Like she yeah. was a cheerleader, and um, yeah. she was gorgeous, and I fell in love immediately from the time I seen her on that basketball court. Yeah. And um, so I we still have that high school love, and mm-hmm. that's amazing. Whether we get married or not, like I don't, it doesn't change anything for us. It doesn't. Just um, a piece of paper. No, and the experience. Like, yeah. I want to give her whatever fucking wedding she wants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, this is a, a little different question, yeah. but do you believe in prenups? So, I'll never forget my partner, David, who's an attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when we um, were together and, like, you know, me and my fiance were dating and all that stuff. And I'll never forget, he said about, like, getting something written up, even even now, like when we were just dating because of the house being in her name and the vehicle and all this other stuff and the real estate that I had and all that. Yeah. Um, I do to a certain extent because at the end of the day, and this is what we were talking about before, you know, before you came and stuff, we started talking about a little bit about partnerships and whatnot of like, yeah. then a day, like you always need to prepare for the end. There's always an end, whether it's good or bad and having preparation for it doesn't mean you lack trust in the relationship it's just it's being intelligent and smart about it um, right. because people grow apart um and uh, you know whether i always start with marriage like marriage like people divorce and a lot of times it's bad but there's a lot of times where people just after 20 years of marriage and kids are growing up and all sort of stuff and mm-hmm. things kind of you know yeah. grow the separate way and you know having that conversation up front and that you know agreement of like look not saying this is going to happen, but if it did, I'd rather have it where we're on the same page so we don't lose. Because, like, if, if me, if something happened between me and my fiance, right, we go our separate ways. God forbid. It, yeah, God yeah. forbid. It would destroy me to know. Because, like, I went through that already. When mm-hmm. when we separated after high school, it broke me. You know what I mean? Um, we didn't talk for seven years. Wow. Yeah, not no interaction, no nothing. She hate like, there was definitely a hate. I was a young piece of shit, young kid, you know what I mean? And I'm very grateful that she left me. Honestly, it was the greatest thing she could have possibly done. Mm-hmm. I was happy for her. But if that would happen again and we would not speak to each other ever again in our lives, um, that would break me, you know, whether yeah. she was with somebody or not and I was with somebody. So with prenups and partnerships and whatnot, you should always have that in mind that like, hey, there might be a time where we disagree and we disagree to a point where it is time to like go separate ways. How do we get through that without ruining the relationship right um so you know i probably won't sign a prenup with with mondi because at the end of the day like i owe her 50 percent of everything anyways you know what i mean like i told you she's my rock she has gone through the woes of my everything life with you, you know what i mean with yeah. me and she has been there it, it wasn't it's not like i can i understand men and women that go through things and you know maybe they do feel like the other significant other doesn't deserve it, but mm-hmm. she deserves it all. Like, honestly, like if something happened, I would say, Hey, look, this is yours. You know yeah. I mean? Take this. Um, and whatnot. And I want to have that conversation with her. And, and I guess it would be a prenup if I would agree to that up front of like, Hey, look, like you can have this, this, and this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No strings attached. You know? Yeah. So I guess it would, yeah, I guess so. You know what yeah. I mean? I but, um, so in a short, yes, I do. You know what I mean? I think it's a good thing, and I think it's a good conversation because I just— like is when you sign, it's like what yours is yours and what hers is hers before you, you guys— Yeah, you agree. You basically are making it like in short, 
it can be it can be any way basically you or want however it. you want to make exactly. it exactly yeah it's an agreement that's attached to then for what if you would get a divorce mm-hmm. that it's almost like a will yeah you know i was I mean? just gonna say that it's actually. legally binding um just determining what goes to who exactly you know yeah. what i mean um and the biggest downfall to marriage is finances mm-hmm. it is it's the largest because people are uncomfortable to talk about it you know what i mean and um and like my my woman she She's kind of the same way. Like she don't want to talk about those things because mm-hmm. she don't like me. I love it. I love talking about that shit. I'm like, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Same. Like my, like a personal goal this year is for her to quit her job. Mm-hmm. I have a certain amount of money that I need to make. And when I make that, she has that option. I'm not going to force her, mm-hmm. but she can then make that decision whether she wants to continue working at that job right. or she can go figure out, maybe go get start another little, job. You know what I mean? Business yeah, something. exactly. Yeah. So um getting the real estate <laughs> yeah no we talked about it. we tried that she was actually we talked about her getting a license and whatnot there you go yeah no fuck no <laughs> she don't want to <laughs> she does not want to and i'm actually thankful for that i i don't i see power couples right yeah i think me and her are power couple for our dynamic you know what i mean she is not in my world and i love that because then i can go home and it's a we breather can, we can talk about other things and yeah. you know what i mean we uh, yeah. it's not constantly within real estate yeah uh, it's seven. I, I, I actually don't know how other couples do it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We brought this up actually to Rob uh, Nylinger. Okay. Because him and his wife. Wa- right, exactly. Yeah. So we were like, because we've had the same kind of idea as you, where it's yeah. like, we don't want our significant other to be within real estate either. Because that's all, what the conversation will be 24 fucking 7. Yep. Right? So we asked him, we were like, do you enjoy that your wife is, she has this massive real estate team. And yeah, yeah. Obviously, you have your massive real estate team. And then, do you ever have like issues where it's just constant real estate? He kind of like came back at us. He was like, why would I not want to talk about real estate? Yeah. I'm like, well, 24 seven. He's like, yeah, what, what the fuck are you talking about? I think it works. Like, okay. It works per person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For me, like, yeah, that would be fucking, that would be cool. Right. To have somebody there that I can talk to about business all the time. Well, that's what she's for. But you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but that's, that's the thing is like, I've realized that life isn't all about real estate and business, and no, that's what right. she showed me. Because my mom, the way my like we go to Puerto Rico, I'm looking at property. Yeah, like I, we have a realtor out there. You know what I mean? That I, that Michael has connected me with and whatnot. We go to New York. I'm looking at lofts. You know what I mean? Like I told her the next time we go, which is actually this coming two weeks from now, we're going to go to New York to see Broadway. Mm-hmm. And I've Ooh. I've told her like I want to get connected with a realtor out there. Yeah. You never fucking know. I might I might buy something. You never know. you never fucking know. Philadelphia. Yeah. I love Philadelphia. We looked at like three places. You know what I mean? Like. She makes me realize that life ain't all about that, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that. You know, yeah. I, I, I love that dynamic. It helps yeah. me stay grounded. It helps me realize that, like, what's why I look at real estate all the time and why I enjoy it so much is because I know what the fruits of the labor is. Right. You know, I get the experience with my kid and, and, and we get to, you know, make the money that we make and go do the things we get to do and all our stuff. So, so yeah, that's, that's how my take is on prenup. And I'm glad you brought that up because it is something that, like, I got to sit down and talk about yeah. and it's discussed. something that people don't discuss. And then right. we take that and shift that towards partnership. Same thing. Yeah. Uncomfortable conversations are the worst fucking conversations. They suck, but they're the best but to have. That's how you, you grow the yeah. most. Exactly. And yeah. I always look at it as like, if after an uncomfortable situation, like conversation with another person, if things aren't resolved or better then it was never meant they, there was, you need to go your separate ways right there. And then because yeah. That shows the true colors and character of the relationship, mm-hmm. uh, and that goes for friendships. That goes for you know your part, your your uh, significant other, your business partners, whatever. If you have an uncomfortable like conversation, and afterwards there's some still type of tension or disagreement or whatnot, yeah. To me, that's a sign of like, hey, like this isn't this isn't going to work out anymore. Right. Um, Should be able to get resolved. Exactly. In that conversation. Exactly. Because yeah. you're you're always going to disagree. There's always disagreements. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all could, you know, say right now, talk about this water bond. I think we're all going to have a different fucking perspective on it. You know, yeah. but that's what the best part about partnerships are. Yeah. Is it see. brings exactly. You know, what I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at it like that's like oh, that's not third. dear part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, but that's the dynamic with with partnerships, and that's why mm-hmm. I, you know, I said to you guys of like understanding the value and and what you guys bring and like for me um still partner with david yep. but now i've transitioned it you know more so on my own and and i think it's more so out of the fact of like we just outgrew our our partnership you know what i mean of like what did i need and 
what I thought I need and all those other things, what he thought we needed and, and that stuff. And that's okay. And I'm, yeah. I'm at, I'm learned. I'm finally at a, and I told you this before you walked out, I was like, I'm at a good spot. Yeah. God has had everything happen exactly the way it's supposed to. And, um, there's no ill will be- between me and David. Mm-hmm. Is there disappointment? Sure. Is there frustration? hundred <clears throat> percent. And that's, like I said, I, I think the, 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 what am I trying to say? Like the end, right? Is yeah. there's always an end. So good terms though. Exactly. And um you know, as you get older, um, you gotta learn how to like accept ending. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And understand that like ending is a good thing. It's just you know a chapter. I mean? Exactly. Know, a chapter in the book ending. And now there's gonna be a new beginning. Yeah. Um yeah. so yeah, we here we are, fast forward. Um, you know, so, dude, I'm back with my my mentor Jay. So we're doing joint ventures. Um, I have asked for Noah. Um, is solely mine. That's my wholesale business. Yeah. Um, lead generation. I have Cityscape Development Group, um, which is construction, flipping, mm-hmm. and then um, I have Voyage Holdings. Um, along with that, I do still have Star Wars. I'm 50% over Star Wars properties, which is 52 units, generates about $53,000 a month. Tammy manages that, and then I, I work on the you know making sure uh, bills are paid and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, and we're not even at max rent for all of our units, by wow. the way. So yeah, that's, that's gonna be yeah. And also lot. too, like I look at so we get to that point of like I'm glad I didn't sell or I got bought out or I was any gonna of that ask stuff. about that. So did you end up liquidating some of that portfolio or nothing? No, so like we we ended up li- I told you we sold about twenty some units. Yeah. yeah. But um this fifty two, like I had asked to be bought out and all this other shit and it was so complicated and so so demanding all our There's stuff that we finally it. came to the point where it's like, let's just fucking get to a point where things are all cleaned up and organized and then we can have a clear conscious conversation like what's next. Yeah. So glad that happened. Yeah. Because like to be honest. Do you guys have that conversation already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have. So we're we at this point. To keep those 52. We're at this point of like, we'll figure it out. Like, let's yeah. let's get through this year. Um, let's get through our taxes. Let's get stuff cleaned up. Let's get some debt paid off, all this sort of stuff. And then we can make a conversation. We can have a conversation of a, like, actually like, what do we want to do with this? Okay, so yeah. We're um, still in the process of that then. Yeah. So like everything's smooth. We just sold our last flip that was in that entity. Um, we closed yesterday or the day before. It's awesome. Um, and uh, what'd you say? How much did you make? 88. No shit. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a big profit. Yeah. That was a solid one. Um, that you was You guys a good split one. that in thirds too? Yeah, no. So that, because it's that entity, it goes, it all goes into that oh, business. Back into yeah, that. yeah. So okay. that's how we've always you guys operated. Are still on, well, it's since you split up, you're not on payroll anymore from no, that nope, nope. Yeah. And I don't take anything from it, and that yeah. was why I got so antsy of like I want to get bought out because I need capital. But that's from, yeah. So you're generating fifty three thousand a month from those fifty two. It's just building up by itself. Yep. So we had some so, debts that we wanted to pay off. There was some some uh, lingering uh, contributions and stuff that we had put in originally, and all our stuff that we're trying to. We're, we're basically do you own anger. any of those free and clear no 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 okay. no, no they're we have about two ish million in equity that's good that's yes good. yeah that's so good. um there is an opportunity at some point that we if rates would ever fucking come back down that we could potentially refi and maybe get some of that cash back out yeah but i would say at this point we're gonna let it just operate and let, let it, it build up. Yeah, yeah, let it build up. Let it get pay us back and, you know, paid what we put into it and stuff, pay off some 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 debt that we have, like some lingering credit card debts from operational stuff last year and right. let it go. And then I'm actually I'm so glad that it is because like I look at it as like I don't e- I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That was and probably such a burden before. It was. It well and in that that time where I was like no job yeah, you know, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like I was so antsy to like get bought out or do this and that because I had no capital. So glad that didn't happen because now I have this portfolio that's like a retirement. Yeah, that's a that's a one hundred percent retirement of like there's fifty two units that say in fifteen years, twenty years could be paid off. Right, rent's only going to keep increasing. Could you imagine us generating sixty some thousand dollars a month, no debt? It's crazy. That would be insane. That's amazing. You know what I mean, yeah. um, so how much do you think that total portfolio is worth right now? Probably five point two. Nice. And we only we only owe like a little less than three. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, Good job. yeah. So you that did that was two years, three years, basically. Yeah. So like the majority of it was the two years. Yeah. Like I said, we bought maybe seven units prior to that. Yeah. Um, but I would say about forty plus were all in the past two years. That's amazing. You know what I mean? yeah. So good job. That was then that and that was the 
the acceleration growth and all that other top heavy and everything else like that. Yeah. You guys just implementing the Burr strategy for a lot of that? All of it was Burr. All, all of it was Burr. God, all I love it was Burr. Burr. All yeah. of it was Burr. That's where we're at right You know what I mean? Like, I think until you get to a level where you have a shit ton of cash, mm-hmm. Burr's like the way to go. You yeah. know what I mean? It like, just doesn't make sense to go with a conventional route. No. And like, like I said, if you have cash that you can't really do anything with, like, yeah, yeah mate, like, yeah, sure, start d- dropping in real estate. But like, for me, it was always, we're just constantly revolving. Like we started, I started with, like you told you nothing. I started with none of my own money. Mm-hmm. It was a line of credit and a line of credit. And then, you know, a HELOC and then a private lender and a private lender and then yeah. refinancing with con- institutional. So like at the end of the day, once we pay back our contributions to this company, like, which we are, you know what I mean? We actually will be here very shortly. Mm-hmm. Zero dollars invested in this business at the moment. You know what I mean? In this 52 years, none of our own money. Yeah. yeah. And it will just, it will you just have that one employee kind of managing the whole rentals. Yeah. That's nice. Yep. And then I, like I said, I have asked for Noah cityscape and my own rental business that I want to grow out. So, yeah. right. um, with cityscape, are you doing like full on developments at all? No, I oh. want to. That's so we are going to, so Jay actually develops. Okay. Jay has done a bunch of, um, single family development, like, you know, buying a lot, building a home for a customer and stuff like that. So, um, I've always wanted to get in developing. Yeah. Um, would you try to target single family as well? Or do you think you would go with multi? Probably multi. You know what I mean? It will get yeah. to that point where it'll probably be multi. Um, like I told Jay, like if we get, if we get land, we'll definitely develop and sell like, yeah. to get the cash. But, um, I know I spoke to somebody who just did a recent multi unit, like big, uh, you know, uh, building. In <laughs> Lebanon? Um, uh, no, it was like an hour. So they're from Lebanon. Okay. Um, but it cost him 13 million. It immediately appraised for 22 million. Jeez. So he was like, I want I'm, he's doing two more now. Holy yeah. And it's like, holy fuck. That's insane. Yeah. So, so if you, and now again, that was 13 million <clears throat> cash. They so he's throwing like cash out refi. Yes. I want to see what the percentage on that. Yeah, was yes. 70%. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. So he's actually, what he's going to do is I don't think he might pull some cash out, but he honestly, cause he, he did all of it cash it was him and it like he had uh two partners yeah walked away with a little over two mil yeah after refinance yep. fee, like yeah two mil yep that's fucking crazy. yeah and it, and, and it's probably cash flowing like a mother and like <laughs> i said like he did it all cash like mm-hmm. him and it was two other partners and one, one of them was the builder um so it was like holy fuck He's you know like, yeah that's amazing yeah you know i mean third generation of a business he his family i think he was third generation third or second it was a cabinet company you know what i mean okay that, that they started you know doing well and buying real estate and all sort of stuff so yeah. so yeah ask for noah wholesales to cityscape um so i double dip on that so okay. i get i get my wholesale fee plus then i i flip it with jay and i get paid out that way nice. and then that's all then to eventually get into you know start buying more real estate again like your own rental portfolio yeah gotcha. yeah so i told stephanie early like this year is uh the year of noah star getting fucking paid yeah um <laughs> so i am just trying to cash as much as i possibly can this year and bring in as much as I can to my pockets um, to then set myself up to start where we can start saying, you know what, we're going to start. I'd like to start buying some bigger buildings. Yeah. Um, shout- I mean, oh, well, maybe let's not talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> shout out to uh, Honest Home Solutions and, yeah. you know, Nico, Kate, and Kelsey, and Eric, and all them. Um, we're under contract for a 100-year-old bank in downtown Lebanon. Um, yeah, we got it uh, under contract. Uh, it was tough negotiations. Uh you know, I got my big guns, Jay, and you know, you got Nico on that side. You know, yeah. yeah, it was getting it was getting a little heated. And then there's me and Kate kind of like, oh, uh, you know. So um we ended up getting it under contract for four oh five. Um Jay got all the finance situated. We're, we're right now. Um I don't want to give too many details until yeah. we close, but um we're we're projected to close at the end of this month. Nice. Um she asked me, like, you asked me earlier, what the fuck am I going to do it? I have no idea. I really don't. I didn't cuss, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's be real on that. Yeah. Like, I put my spin on I already that. Knew that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you, I, So what's the zoning allow? Um, it's office and institutional. Um, you so we're going to definitely put our office in there. Okay. Um, but uh, I had some ideas of doing, like, a, a speakeasy 1920s uh, cigar lounge in the, in the uh, basement, which is, like, it's actually there's a sign on the outside that says fallout center no so if anything would ever happen it's bomb shelter yeah exactly wow. yeah. um 
then you know there's apartments always on you know that's always on the table like that's what i was gonna figuring ask. that out i would love to be able to put some really dope like loft yeah style some industrial style yeah, yeah you know what i mean tell, tell me not so that um but would you have to get a rezone for that we would and this you know dealing you know the pain in the ass we were talking about that politics yeah, bureaucratic and... bullshit like i got a <laughs> lobby for it and i need to be able to present it to the zoning hearing board and they have to pass it which i do a lot of good things in the air like is about telling her i hate saying i hate like saying these things and like using this but it's like everything that i've ever touched in Lebanon, i've made better yeah um we have a housing like in Lebanon, there's a housing crisis like yeah. there's not enough homes for people to live in so um, homeless people there it's getting there it's slowly building up um and and the thing like so we we, we, we need affordable housing that's definitely yeah. always in urban areas you always need that but Lebanon doesn't have any like we don't have enough premium housing either yeah. and if we want to continue to draw in people that you know like younger professionals that make good money and all that stuff you got to be able to provide them a, a place that they want to stay yeah um so what's in Lebanon like why would people somebody move there so the biggest thing is cost of living so the cost of living versus like Harrisburg like Charlotte stuff is less yeah um the biggest thing so Pennsylvania the Keystone State right yeah like we're, we're center like we are the epicenter of of um, shipping and 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 um, every, uh, everything like that going up and down the East Coast. Yeah, Lebanon County is the Keystone County. We are we are the central dead area. center. You think about it like Harrisburg, west of Lebanon, forty five minutes. Reading, east of Lebanon, forty five minutes. York, southeast of Lebanon, forty five minutes. Uh, Allentown's is forty five minutes to an hour away. Philly's two hours away. New York's two plus hours away. Baltimore is you know three hours away. Like we are literally dead center. So you yeah. can you can literally yeah. Do That's how I feel things. about Harrisburg too. I was like, we're in such a like a central location where yep. you think of Harrisburg, it's like, okay, it might be the capital of Pennsylvania, but what the fuck is here? Not too much to be honest. I mean, yeah. government jobs, shit like that. Yep. But at for, the same time, two hours from Philly, yes. three hours from Pitt. And a big thing for us is a lot of distribution jobs. So like a lot of a lot distribution where bro. Like we have yeah. like I have a client, I have a tenant who's a warehouse manager at uh, the new Walmart distribution center that's uh, on 72 North. Yeah. Um, right outside the city. He makes like fucking 80 grand a year. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah I mean, younger guy, like, yeah. you know, and it's paying he, good. He, yeah, he, he rents out a one bedroom and I think he pays like 11 25. Yeah. And wow. people are like, I get so much backlash from a lot of people on Facebook and whatnot. Eleven twenty five for a oh one my bedroom? God, Are you yeah, fucking you're, kidding me? You're <laughs> fucking slow. You know, you're, you're a piece of <laughs> shit. You're <laughs> rich. Also, I'm like over here looking at my bank account. Like, I got like fucking two grand left in my name that it's probably going to, Peace out tomorrow because I got to pay some bills. You know, you know what I mean? that. like, like you, you know, so we, um, <laughs> we just did a whole episode on how broke we are. Yeah, like, dude, I, I think I've been broke every rich. fucking day yeah. of my life. You know what I mean? So Cash no, port. like, I'm trying to do something for Lebanon and grow. Like, I live in the city, some um, in a good way though. And yeah. like every every time you hear gentrification, you, you it gets the backlash of it. But right. we're we're being gentrified with the, the our own culture there. Like Hispanic yeah. culture is the ones buying from me or the ones renting from me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If anything, I'm the minority now in Lebanon. I know. Like it's it's, it's the yeah. truth. And I love it. That's like insane. I love the Hispanic like my, my fiance is Puerto Rican. My son's half Dominican. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've yeah, I love I love the Hispanic culture. You know what I mean? And they're not gonna have the red beard though. Mm-hmm. Nah, dude, no, you'd be surprised. Puerto Ricans, man, there's redheaded Puerto Ricans. I'm serious. I swear to God, bro. Never... Like full oh, blown. Nah, I have seen. Yeah, full blown yeah. Puerto Rican no, with the red one hair. Boxer, he's like a. Well, oh, so Canelo. he's he's Mexican. Canelo. He's Mexican. Yeah. So Mexicans, yeah. there's there's redhead like dude. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the gene of the red, like the redhead, yeah, is everywhere, strong. bro. It's strong, man. <laughs> it's strong. it's honestly it's everywhere. But I'm. I'm trying to continue to make the area better and grow it. And yes, that is unfortunate for others because it's going to push them out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that is growth. That is like what happens. You know right. what I mean? And the others that can't afford it, you know, there's a lot of up a little bit. Well, yeah, and, and like dick, but like get a good job. You know? And that's the thing is that there are good jobs. Like people are like, yeah. oh, who can afford eleven hundred dollars a month? It's like I got a warehouse. tenant that does it and he does it very fucking well. So I don't yeah. know what the fuck to tell you. A lot of except, companies hiring. Yes. All the time. Yes. And um and maybe I, 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 when I talk like this, I do some, I catch myself and I don't want to come across as a arrogant white piece of shit, but growing up, my dad got sick when I was in middle school and my mom had to take care of me and my brother. She worked three jobs. Um, she worked full time as a beautician during a day. She worked as a, uh, cashier at Walmart mm-hmm. in the evenings. And then she worked at a corner store cashier on the weekends to, basically fucking survive you know what i mean when my dad got sick and the business fell on her um you know they got audited by the irs they got sued by fucking labor and industry all in the same year 
My dad didn't get this ability for the first two years, so there was no income coming. We go from my dad made the last year of his business. This is back in 2006. Yeah. My dad grossed over 300 grand. You know what I mean for a small drywall business. It was growing rapidly. Yeah. So you know now a lot of that was you going into. He was constantly reinvesting in his business, buying new tools. You know, buying vehicles and stuff like that, right. getting bigger contracts. You know, going out and you know buying that material and all that stuff, but. You know, my mom at the time, you know, was a beautician making ten dollars an hour plus tips. Yeah. Like when my dad went down, like that was a like. Now that I'm a adult, I am catastrophic. It was, exactly, and I, I didn't see any of it. Yeah, I mean, my mom still got me basketball sneakers for sports. Yeah. She still, you know, sent me to basketball camp. She still helped my brother through college. Like she did all that. So like, I'm sorry to those that I'm I I don't sympathize because I watched I a woman break her back to raise us and support us and do whatever the fuck it took and yeah. never once complained. I can relate to you so much, to be honest. Yeah. Like, the whole situation you just said has honestly been, like, the past two years of my life. So, my mom busts her ass three jobs right now. So, she does... She's a guided secretary at Susquehanna. Yeah. And then she does Uber every single night for, like, three hours from, like, nine to, like, 12. Comes home, packs... I have five siblings. So. Oh, shit. Yeah. Stepdad, God bless her. Stepdad went through like a whole depression stage. Yep. Business failed. Sat on his ass for the past like nine months. No income whatsoever. I know exactly. Weekends, mom's working Mission Barbecue catering. As yeah. Well. So it's like everything she, she can Dude, I love do. Mission Barbecue, by the so way. Funny. Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude. Oh my God. Uh, I'm sorry. Like, I was really deep. And then you said, and I'm like, oh. I'm, I'm fasting, by the way. So I'm on a 24 oh, yeah? hour fast. So, awesome. yeah. So as soon as you said that, uh, yo, my mouth is like dripping right now, dude. So I apologize for no, that deep. But no, you, no, what you just said is exactly That's, what I went through. Right, exactly. So it's like, I have so much fucking respect for her. It's ridiculous because I'm never home. Like, I'm going for my job 6 yep. a.m. to 2.30. I might go home to shower. If not, I'm usually coming to yeah. here, going to an appointment until I come home at like, what, 8, 9, 10? And like, like I said, I. Like, I care about my community and I know that, that like I know people that need help and all that. And I am always willing to give help. It's where, when I'm trying to do something that's better, like to better the error, I believe is in the best interest. And I get yeah. people that are like questioning my character saying, you know, I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. I'm shady, whatever, all this other stuff. And that gets to me. It does. Cause you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I do whatever I possibly can to like the reason I want, I want to make so much money is so I can fucking do Things that other people aren't willing to do. Right. You know what I mean? Like I've invested millions of dollars in the Lebanon City. Millions. Like mm -hmm. I think almost ten million dollars now. You know what I mean? In the Lebanon City. I could have done that anywhere. Yeah. And I chose specifically to do it in my backyard. I specifically chose to live in the city. I live on the north side, the side that everybody thinks is is a piece of shit and all this other stuff. Me and my fiance and my son live on the north side and we love it. Yeah. Um you know, I keep my son in that school district when everybody talks shit on, on Lebanon school district. Um, you know, like I do these things because I believe so much in, in the area and what it can be and, and what I see, you know. Um, and it's just frustrating when you have people that have like the, 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 the biggest haters are the ones that live in Lebanon. Yeah. Is that ridiculous? And it's like, it's like then get the fuck that leave. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like do everybody a favor and then, oh, I can't leave and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, then fucking do, then help. Do right. something, you know, go. I'm not a big volunteer. I will be straight up honest. I'm not a big volunteer. I just not. It's never, you know what I mean? I coach basketball. I coach sports and stuff. That's where I feel like I volunteer. Yeah. But my biggest thing is like when I have money, I give it. You know what I mean? I try to, I give it to the Y. I, I try to sponsor the, 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 the bitty basketball program. I yeah. try to give it to the, the sports programs and you know what I mean? And it does suck when someone reaches out to me and says, hey, like we have an event coming up. Do you mind the sponsor on or something? I, I have to have the fiduciary responsibility to say, I can't. Like, I don't have it right now. Yeah. But I would love to. Like if I had millions of dollars. People think what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You're a yeah. real estate investor? Oh, you're a uh, you, yeah, you're a yeah. Or a business owner. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like. It's not always the case, man. No, it's <laughs> rarely. Honestly, like most successful business owners really don't see a return until the end of their career. You know what I mean? Or late, like. Later went on. through the woes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so, so yeah, I a hundred percent believe in Lebanon and I want it to become amazing. And, and, and I want it to be a place like you asked me, like, why would people come there? And it's like opportunity, yeah. you know what I mean? It's the whole purpose of America was we were established for opportunity and it was different for each and every single person. Like my heritage, um, is our, you know, I have family from 
Ireland and, and Italy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm Irish and Italian. Um, and they came here looking for a better opportunity in whatever they were searching. And right. I look right. at Lebanon is that's what, that's what Lebanon is. It's a place to have an opportunity to, to grow. And, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like Harrisburg is already developed. Lancaster's already developed. You know what I mean? Like Lebanon isn't. Yeah. So to me, that's the biggest opportunity you could score. That's you know what I mean? Lebanon. Exactly. Um, do a lot of people do Section 8 over there? Yes, yes. I actually do not. I have one Section 8 uh, tenant. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, we have just started accepting Section 8. Yeah. Um, but I do, you know what I mean, the, the properties, like I, I have a portfolio and we've we chopped it up and now we are saying like, hey, we have a, a portion that we can accept Section 8 and we have a portion where we like to sh- uh, go for like midterm and uh, partial uh, year leases. Yeah. So I have this one apartment that we've gotten a lot of um residency like so like people that were at the hospital oh, okay. um like well, traveling nurses kind of no like they were in like uh to become a doctor oh okay. um and they ran it from us and they were there like nine months and then they tell the next like i think it was pharmacists to be honest yeah they tell the next person so we had like the past three tenants all be like six to nine months and wow. it would fill immediately to the next person that's awesome um and, and i'll do more from that than just the typical year tenant. well yeah and i like that you know what i mean it's like hey they're paying Again, eleven fifty for a one bedroom apartment in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, but it's like it's top tier, it's gorgeous, you know yeah. what I mean? And they have no idea. They're not even from the area. Yeah. And I love it. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I in my head it's like, well, I want more of that. Because there's a lot of people that do section eight. And don't get me wrong, there we need more section eight. They need you need more affordable housing, but for me, it's not my gig. You know what I mean? Everyone just, has their yeah. different thing. Their niche, yeah. you know? Um and I I look at it as like I want to do the premium thing. You know what I mean? I want to do, I don't want to do luxury because like, again, luxury, you start to get some insane costs and all that stuff, but I want right. to be premium. I want to have central air. I want it to be fully remodeled. I want it yeah. to be, you know what I mean? Top tier. People forget also too, you can have a nice product, but a shitty service. I provide a good service. Tammy is amazing. She does an amazing uh, job managing um, and being there for our tenants. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, Those you know. Property exactly, and, and a good service. Yep, yeah, because service. I know That's a lot. What of, it's about I know a lot yeah. of guys that do have nice properties, but suck at being a landlord. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean. And I know a lot of people that that actually like are half decent landlords, but their properties are like you know what I mean, half shit. It's like yeah, and in their head they're like, oh no, this is this is fine, and it's like. No, How does that make sense? I man? hate when you walk into like a, a client's, like you're looking <laughs> to go buy a house. You know the seller. It's like this is their house they lived in for the past thirty years. They're like. Everything's fucking fine in here. Like, what yeah. do you mean? It's like, <laughs> this is dude, great. That, dude, that tile's like chipping apart. It's been there for 30 years. Like, there's so many hey, things. Yeah, like, no. Oh, well, just... even landlords, like, I look at someone else's portfolio and I'm like, all I see is fucking deferred maintenance. Yeah. I'm like, this guy's asking top dollar. And I'm about to put another 10 or 15 grand into this thing. You see, like, like yeah. three layers of shingles on the roof. Yeah, like, what the, and, and he's Pretty like, hey, I, I'm not a slumlord. I take care. I take really good care of my properties. Whenever tenant calls, I go. It's like, I respect that, but also how you repair things is definitely coming yeah. to play. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, um, the journey from the dollar to to where we're at now has been insane. You know what I mean? I I'm appreciative of all of it. Um, I'm thankful for all the people that have come into my life and you know my partner. Yeah. Um, so and I, definitely, I was uh, I was down in the dumps, you know, last year, not knowing what I was going to do, where I was going to go, and I realized that real estate is definitely my home. You know yeah. I mean, it's yeah. what I love. Um, I'm in the wholesale game now, which everybody, I, I, if you know me personally, I, wholesale is, is a fucking animal. It is a, it's definitely a, it's a beast. It is. <laughs> trying to yeah. It is. You know what I mean? And, yeah. um, but I know it's a necessary <clears throat> thing to do. Um, right. and it will help feed my other businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, but like my favorite part is definitely the flipping. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. yeah and the, even the rentals, like, you know, when I get to burr a property and, see it and are you still going through and like designing your flips like picking out what materials you want not anymore so jay my my mentor um and now my one of my uh, business associates um our relationship is is cityscape development um acquires the properties and funds the properties yeah and then he manages the construction and the renovation and handling of the budget okay um and it's like our we have a flip right now in anvil uh 612 south mount uh pleasant um, it's a three bedroom, two full bath rancher with a two car garage on over an acre. Nice. Um, I was on that pro- I was at that property three times. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and it's listed, you know, like yeah. 
we've had a lot of showings hopefully praying that we get an offer this week but that's awesome you know what i mean so how are you getting your like deals like your marketing do you have someone like a va helping you so this year is the first time in my life i've ever paid for marketing it's all always been organic of like people calling me word of mouth all their stuff so yeah it's probably a lot easier when you have such a small town like lebanon it's it like, is everyone kind of knows well and, and i've established like you know like like you guys are in harrisburg like there's how many guys that yeah. like have been established for so long and yeah. you're yeah. saturating all our stuff where like I'm in my hometown. You are small. You are that guy. I, yeah, yeah, I'm the one of the main guys. So I'm trying to read. Now I will say that has tarnished a little bit because I got out of the real estate for like a year. Right. So now I have to rebuild that back up. Of like, so I'm just building the trust back of. Yeah, of like I'm else. back. I'm here. Yeah. Um, but I hired a VA. Um, I actually uh, shout out to Brandon Votuk. I actually hired him as a coach, and I went through his program, and he actually coached me in setting that all up the crm system the va nice. the scripts all that other stuff so that was definitely a learning curve for me Can you say how much how much did the coaching cost uh sixty eight hundred dollars okay sixty eight hundred dollars i got um and then i got a custom built crm system That's um nice. i had the the vas are trained yeah um and then all through that process of like uh setting that all up and then going through that process of uh, everything else like that now i knew a lot prior to that yeah but it was nice to like have someone break it bring it all yeah bring it all together yeah together. um so um uh, also he just came out with his new book i, don't know I did guys, see that I did yeah pick up my copy i didn't get to read it yet but I think it's um, called a better way yep yep yeah. so um he taught me you know what i mean like i've been on him to coach me for years actually and it wasn't even it wasn't even for the wholesaling thing like i told him when i first like when we first started chopping it up like the guy's an operational like you know he's his project management background you know <laughs> Um, and I loved it. I was like, bro, I want you to coach me. Like, I yeah. love how your brain works. Yeah. Um, he's been able to structure a lot of successful businesses. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, I hired him for that and I got that all situated. So I had the VA up and running, um, the CRM system running. I'm actually going to be hiring an admin. Okay. Um, I was going to do a virtual assistant for my admin. Um, but I have, uh, I, I like the idea of having someone where like they can do my marketing, they can go to run out the properties that, you know, I want do someone everything. that's kind of get like an assistant. Like, yeah, yeah. Fit, like fit, like basically like I want them to do like what a virtual assistant could do, right. All the yeah. back end stuff, but also to like come out and film me, come out and take pictures. Come, you know, they yeah. got to run to drop a check off for somebody. You know what I mean? I, I like that. And yeah. there is a value and there's a dollar value to it. Like where I could pay, get a personal assistant or an admin for maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. That's all good and dandy, but if it's something that has to be out the realm of virtual, mm -hmm. now I'm screwed. So what does that like? What does that look like? If right. I still have to go do that that task, yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to pay the the extra six to ten dollars more to get the full encompass of it. So right. that's going to be my next hire is is that position, okay. um, and it's going to help me manage across all three businesses. Nice. Um, it sounds like you're doing good. Still, uh, the virtual assistant thing is new to me, man. I got leads <laughs> and. It's different. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, it, it's, a, I'm not, I have no sales background, none at all. Um, yeah. I'm an electrician. Mm -hmm. Um, for me to call people is definitely a different experience of those calling me. Yeah. yeah. It is a harder sale. Like I, 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 um, had a guy be like, you called me and I'm like, yeah, I know I called you, but you said <laughs> you want to sell. So yeah. well, like, what do we, you know, it's clearly on your mind. Um, yeah. so definitely treading those waters, you know what I mean? It's, it takes time. Yeah. It's definitely new to me and it's, Patience isn't my virtue. So like it is, it's, I've only, I literally just got them started in February. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, so it's so, like really recent. Oh, super recent. Okay. You know what I mean, and um, it's, it's like, it's, it's frustrating right now. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it's like, also I have all these other things going on. <clears throat> I, I, you know, when she sets the, the leads up in my CRM system, I have to call them to schedule my appointments. Right. Right. So I still have to sit down, get on a phone and get, go through every and single report one. And all that other stuff. So like, that's where my admin all, you know, hiring someone in admin at the office can do that. You know, say right. spend a, an hour or two so you, a day. Do you just want to do the appointments yourself? Yes. Okay. I want to do the appointments. I want to do appointments and close them. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm, that's where I feel that's the best part. Like when too. I'm on the phone and like I can do it, but it's a time consuming aspect of like, I got to sit down and I got to call all these four leads and yeah. get that. And they're not even scheduled for an appointment yet. It's, yeah. it's I time like, consuming. I like running the numbers. I like going to the property. Yeah. I like making the offers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that's where I'm trying to get to. And yeah. it will happen. You know what I mean? I, I've definitely learned to respect the time frame. Um, normally when you want to rush something, that is the best time not to rush it. Yeah. Um, and I've learned that the hard way. So, so 
I'm going to get the VA situated. I'm going to look to get my admin situated. And then, you know, from there start to really, yeah. you know, because then that's when you can fine tune stuff. Yeah. You know, and that's the best part is when you like, right. you're kind of half assing your way through and now you have mm-hmm. all the the puzzle pieces and you start putting them together, you start tweaking them. It's like, man, this, that's why it starts to turn into an animal. Yeah. So, yeah. I know that we could have hours of conversation yep. but so we're coming to a close here but for the people that are watching like Wait, I wasn't done. I want more questions. oh go ahead go ahead one more question <laughs> um so 2024 it's like a new year you have any like one main goal for this year so just like kind of like it's, by the sounds of it, it's like clean everything up i have a i have i actually have on my phone right now i have notes that the the things that i want to do for goal wise and personally is one is where my fiance has the opportunity to quit mm-hmm. right a full-time job and make a decision um the other one is is uh i'm gonna buy my first rolex this year that's hey. good yeah Congratulations. So I've, I've had opportunities in the past to do it and yeah just you know we sometimes forget to to you know we take our wins for granted because mm-hmm. we're, we're in the weeds all day and every day yeah and um this year i am going to and um i follow a guy on tiktok uh, Moses the jeweler. He's yes. up in New York. Do you follow him? Yes. I, yeah, I fucking yo, I watch, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Moses, um, I am gonna go to his shop, and that's where I'm gonna buy my that's first so Rolex. Y'all heard it here first. So. Yeah. yeah, bring me with when you're going. Yeah, going I will. That, I will. That'd be man. cool. Let's vlog it. That would be, yo. He be so he sick. would fucking love. I guarantee yeah. he would love that. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, let's do it. I'm gonna probably do it. In, my goal is to do it by uh, either October or November. Right. Awesome. So yeah. we can plan a New York trip. You know, a day yeah. trip. Go let's up there. Go to the Diamond District, and that'd be so fun. That would be sick. And you guys, yo, that would be. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. so um well, yeah, that's that's how I would any remainder like advice you would give to the audience? Advice, advice. This is always the tough Just question because of the pressure. Yeah. Just I would it. say um when you're here, let's see, uh accept endings. That would probably be my best advice is is mm-hmm. it, it, accept the ending. Um and know that it's it's I there's a beginning chills. the next the next day. Yeah. Um Learn how to accept the ending and and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, um, and appreciate it because if you don't, it will just eat you alive, and it will <clears throat> it will taint or tarnish the the experience that you had. Yeah. So I would say that's my closing statement: is like you know appreciate and respect the ending, and just know that there's going to be a beginning tomorrow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So. So we're going to end it there. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. For hopping on. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. With that being said, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.